Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barasande, host of the U.S. Revolution. And if you're about to watch this amazing session that we did, then you're part of a group of humans on this planet who are ascending and moving into a higher frequency. You're not here by accident, and I'd like to offer you a special gift that will help you to adjust to some of these frequencies, plug in even deeper, and it's an energy activation MP3 that will double the power of your energy field in less than 57 seconds. It's absolutely free, and it's the first link in the description down below, but it's also going to let you get to hear calls like this one live and get daily help from healers, teachers, and masters all over the world. It's absolutely free and it's part of what we're doing every day at UAuth Revolution. So if you feel called in your heart, you can click the link down below and the special session that you wanted to watch and experience will start right now. <laughs> One of the things that I, I, I wanted to start off, I want people to kind of contemplate a question, um, and it, it goes to do with what we're going to be looking at with the ascended heart, looking at with the high heart today, is um, there's often this kind of a, we'll call it a disconnect from the true self, where we start to, we, we you know, as we grow up, there's a space and place where, uh, just in, in the developmental abilities of a child, we, you know, at some point we learn mine, we learn I, uh, we learn to see ourselves as an individual. And along with beginning to see ourselves as an individual, we start to come into possession. That's where we go, you know, my ball, my toy. <laughs> yeah. And um, as we do that, as we grow, I know this sounds uh, uh, like it's kind of simplistic childhood development, but it actually, that mechanism within our consciousness continues to grow. And it's only usually addressed at those earlier ages, you know, when our parents are teaching us, okay, no, this is this is yours and this is that. But within our energy field, most of us did not have a teacher to say what you're feeling is yours and what you're feeling is not yours. There's a part and a space where I want to have you look at yourself today in a way that says, if I look in the mirror, and we're going to look at this kind of energetic mirror, and we'll do a process a little bit later on in the call, but I want to start seeding this energy. If you were to look into a mirror, what is truly yours? What is the truest essence of who you are versus what is the essence of what through stories or through experiences you have labeled yours, you have called yours, or you have taken possession of, or you feel other people have sort of wedged into your space and shoved onto you? And those are all sort of their own categories. We, we're going to look at your genetic lineage. We're going to look at your lineage of light, which when we talk about light DNA and activating light DNA, you mentioned in the, the sort of pre-call, uh, you know, looking at past, present, future lifetimes, there is a space and place where outside of time and space, uh, you know, outside of this reality, you know, time is immaterial. Time is, is, is relative. And, I mean, even scientifically we know that. That was sort of Einstein's uh, big breakthrough. And um, every day, even lately, within the last couple of months, more and more is coming out uh, relating to string theory and quantum you know, healing and um, just how time and distance and all of those things don't really seem to have the effect that we used to believe they had. And that's opening up to the idea that time is fully relative. So outside of that, you are connected in to a much broader version of yourself that has – the knowledge base, I know some people would describe it as, you know, you can tune into your Akashic records or uh, other sort of states of awareness, higher consciousness. The truth is those are all frequency maps or frequency points on an energetic map. And that energetic map is much broader than what most people know. And as you begin to tune into that, there there does oftentimes come a space where um, it goes into, well, what's mine personally? What is the individuation that I have chosen to live in this lifetime? Versus what is the collective? Versus what is my spouse? Versus what what is the uh, the story that I'm feeling plugged into based off of the behavior of my children or the behavior of those outside of me, people at work, the government? Um, why am I feeling certain ways? And I can tell you that the reason that it was so important to move from that space of what I call the empathic heart into the ascended heart is so many light workers are you know every day having awakening experiences. And the more people I've talked to over the last couple of months, the more people I've seen that are realizing they have a, a great disconnect between who, who they really are or the potential of who they really could be 
and the life that they're living right now. And part of that is in large part because as they open their heart, they open more of that empathic part of the heart. And the empathic mm. heart is something that has been very valuable to light workers. Um, yet people like me, you know, you and I, I've shared my story of growing up um, just completely, you know, uh, childhood obesity, very depressed, very overweight, uh, shutting down the heart, and depression, anxiety, uh, all through my teen years and into my 20s, um, all of those things, and really understanding what, okay, who who was I at my core versus what was I taking on, what were people telling me I was supposed to be, or what were the assumptions about life yeah. that I was making that weren't actually truly of me. And that empathic heart is a space where as we open to source, we also open to that space where we are wanting to love and be loved. And in that space, we start to oftentimes feel what other people are feeling. And even if you're just somebody who, uh, you know, walks into, I've used this example before, uh, say on, you know, if there's a, a special sale going on and you walk into a really crowded place and there's that kind of frenzied frenetic energy, or yeah. um, if you've ever walked into, you know, a concert or a, an event where there's lots of people around, you can feel that energy in the air. Um, that is... Everybody has their own, you know, biomorphic fields, their own electromagnetic fields. Everybody has their energy field. But those all begin to combine to weave a bigger tapestry of life. And if you have a very open empathic heart and you're not sure how to direct that energy into your high heart where you can come back from the observer and really see, okay, this is mine, this isn't, and let that go, you're going to be feeling a lot of push-pull. You're going to be feeling a lot of I don't know who I am, what my purpose is. You're going to be feeling uh, a little bit lost in the shuffle, and you're going to feel those denser, lower, depressive, anxious vibrations, uh, and that's going to take a toll. So um, when I talk about the empathic heart, it's not a negative in any way, shape, or form. It is that space that, as lightworkers, has opened us to seeing that there is more out there than just what we learn of as the individual I. It's the thing that allows us to realize, wait, I'm I'm feeling this energy, um, but without without combining and without joining that and really seeing the empathic heart from the space of the ascended heart, you can get locked into that kind of maze, um, and it can become something that you get lost in for a very long time. And so that's okay. one thing that I want to really work with people today is lifting out of that. Okay, so let me ask you this, Jared. What are some signs? Because as I as I looked at this, I thought, oh, okay, empathic heart, good, you know, and then, oh, ascended high heart, oh, even better. Mm-hmm. So we want to have an empathic heart, but is, yes. there's a point where maybe that becomes – us taking on the energies, taking on sort of the third dimensional energy and, and yeah. locking us, trapping us, keeping us subject to that which we which we which we are not, right? Taking on other people's energies, walking into a room and feeling so much of that energy that we actually begin to entrain to it. And I'd like to ask you, what are some signs that maybe our empathic heart is really open and we're entraining to stuff? So some of the signs that maybe you're taking on things that aren't yours, for example, mm-hmm. um, one of the biggest things that I find with people that have a really, really, really wide open ascended heart and that empathic space, but that's not sort of there's that dividing line in there is they feel completely lost. They start to feel completely disconnected from source because okay. when they go into that heart space to plug in, it's almost like the the electromagnetic process through which the brain filters light through which our heart begins to all of that the emotions everything begins to move through the body that space it's almost like there's such a tidal wave of energy that it's just you feel like you cannot connect into source you feel like you cannot connect mm-hmm. into your purpose um other spaces are where you're easily triggered um i have you know i'll be talking to people and they'll be like i don't know what happened you know my coworker did this thing and all of a sudden it brought back you know something that i traced back to a memory when i was 5 years old i don't know what's going on wow. your energy becomes the tapestry is there, and I'll, I'll use the example of a quilt, right, with all of the different squares. All of the squares are there, but they start to become jumbled. And so all of your emotions start to become confused. You start to feel things going out sideways. Emotions start to get bottlenecked. Um, things start to move in a space that just you, you feel depressed. You feel anxious. You feel lost. Um, you feel hopeless. You feel adrift. Um, even if there's a space where you feel like, I know that the world can move in this direction, uh, it feels like maybe it's not for you. Or you kind of do the other thing where you feel like you, you're basically living in uh, a dream world. Um, I, I say this without any negative connotation, but it's kind of like la-la land. You, you're very ungrounded in your in your mind's eye. You know everything you'd like to feel and everything you'd like to create, but there's just something 
about the way your field is structured where you're not allowing it to fully ground into your body so you can physically create it. And that's because you're living in the empathic space of, of the, the feeling and you're living in the space where – and the feeling part is, is a, a huge component of it. Um, but as we move into that, that high heart area and open up to all of that ascended heart, that, that entire space, then we're able to fully ground in – who we are and we're able to live, we're able to fully direct our energy, direct our vibrations and really create the outer reality that always mirrors the inner reality, but we're able to do it with a much larger amount of clarity and a much larger amount of, of just power behind our own energy. We don't feel like, uh, another, another thing that I see with people that have that opening is they give their power away. Um, you mentioned this so brilliantly uh, in the pre-call, so I hope everybody was able to hear that, where oftentimes people will say, well, you know, there's there's one way. There's one teacher. Uh, there's one guru. Yeah. There, and I'm going to yeah. give all of my power to them because they're going to be the one to save me. And that's that space where you're wanting to feel someone else's power. And as you're wanting to feel someone else's power, you know, it, the initial way that that sometimes helps people on their journey is. Um, they're not able to feel their own power. They see somebody. They resonate with the power that someone else has. They feel into that and go, wow. But then they start to give their own power over to that because the more power they give to the, the other person or the ideology, that's what starts to fuel their own uh, sort of individualized presence because they create this kind of self-fulfilling, self-feeding cycle where they give their power away so that they can feel it in someone else through someone else telling them what to do, and that is where they find their purpose. This is the space of where you and I always talk about of going, no, it's not about plugging into you or me or anyone else. This is about your direct connection, your direct isness, your direct lineage to and of and from source energy. This is what opening you up to that energy does. So as we open that ascended heart with the empathic heart, we open you up to what you're feeling, but allowing it to be directly from source and allowing you to really know who you are. Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barzande, host of the Wealth Revolution. And if you enjoyed that snippet of one of our interviews, I'd invite you to just scroll down for one second and click the link down below. You're gonna get access not only to a free gift that's gonna double the power of your energy field in just 57 seconds, you're also gonna get to be a part of the US Revolution and listen to interviews just like the ones you heard that are happening live right now, daily, where I interview some of the top healers, teachers, and masters in the field of energy transformation, energy healing, consciousness, ascension, and more. Plus, you're gonna to get to be on live calls where you'll get your questions answered, you'll get to submit them via webcast, you'll even get to be one-on-one -on -one live on the phone and get energy healing help daily. It's all part of what we've been doing. So get up to date, click the link, join and be a part of it. And if you enjoyed this video or you'd like to see more of it, click the like button or subscribe. I always upload new content and I give weekly energy updates. So please let us know how we can serve you. And thanks for watching and being in my life. Much love.